If you want a bold isopod that will eat right out of your hand, Porcelia labus might be the species for you. Or maybe not. Hi, I'm Russ of Aquarimax Pets. Porcelio labus is a very popular isopod species, but there are some drawbacks to it. Today's video will cover the good and bad of this species. I'll provide an introduction to Porcelio labus and a few of its morphs. Next, I'll go into housing and care, followed by its suitability as a bioactive cleanup crew species, and then I'll talk about its pros and cons as a pet and hobby isopod. Porcelio labus occurs naturally in Europe and has been carried by humans into various areas around the world. The word porcelio means little pig and labus means smooth. As you can see, the carapace of this species is much smoother than its close relative Porcelio scaber. Scaber means rough. Porcelio labus is a moderately large isopod, occasionally approaching lengths of one inch, although it is usually a little smaller. Porcelio labus cannot conglobate, but it can do what is termed a defensive curl. Porcelio labus has quite a few variants. Strangely, some of them do not appear capable of interbreeding with one another. There are many reasons put forth for why this might be the case, and I have more videos on that topic. Here's one of them if you're interested. For now, let's look at some of those morphs. Porcelio labus wild type looks like this specimen, the typical isopod gray, with a somewhat glossy appearance. Porcelio labus dairy cow is possibly the most popular morph of this species in the hobby. It was named for the resemblance of its white background with dark markings to certain bovine morphs. When I first saw Porcelio labus dairy cow, I thought, this is a little like Porcelio scaber dalmatian, but larger, glossier, with a much more consistently expressed pattern. How cool is that? Years later, I still really enjoy keeping dairy cows. This is an extremely bold, wildly prolific isopod with a big appetite. The next morph I'd like to talk about is Porcelio labus milkback. This type has a gray background with variable light markings, but the characteristic that sets it apart from the similar dairy cow morph is that as the isopod grows, the center of the carapace often becomes a pale sort of milky silvery color offset by the darker gray background. This morph, like the dairy cow, is quite bold and prolific, gets large. They even tend to be a little stockier than dairy cows. Some milkbacks look an awful lot like dairy cows, so much so that they're difficult to tell apart, but a high quality milkback is quite easy to distinguish. Next, let's take a look at Porcelio labus orange. The most obvious difference from the previous two morphs is, of course, the orange color, but it is also a very different isopod in several other ways. It's considerably less bold and day active, and on average, it seems to have a smaller adult size. It's also somewhat less prolific, though it still has a pretty hearty appetite. Another morph that I keep is Porcelio labus California mix. This appears to be a polymorphic locality. As the name indicates, the original specimens were collected from a population in California, and they are quite a variable morph. Some specimens look exactly like wild types, while others have low expression pied markings. Others are white, and still others, and I have to say these are probably my favorites, look a lot like a sort of peachy milkback. In terms of size, activity levels, and fecundity, they seem to be somewhere in between Porcelio labus orange and dairy cows or milkbacks. But I haven't had my culture as long, and as I discuss in detail on my video on new isopod colonies, the behavior in a large, mature culture often differs significantly from that which you see in a smaller one. There are some other morphs out there, including a white morph descended from low expression dairy cows, a caramel morph, and this interesting one, the How Now, which was isolated and refined by Kyle from roachcrossing.com. Kyle got this line going from a mutation that showed up among his caramel Porcelio labus. He mentions on his site that these will not cross with dairy cows. I'm kind of tempted to see if they'll cross with Porcelio Leva's orange, though. And thank you to Kyle for letting me use this photo, and I'll include a link to his website down in the description. Before I go any further, 
I'd like to offer my heartfelt thanks to my patrons at Patreon. Your support helps make these videos possible, and also helps me improve the quality of the videos that I create. What's more, I enjoy the opportunity to communicate directly with you through the Patreon platform. If you'd like to join the Aquarimax Patreon family for as little as one US dollar a month, please click the link at the end of this video or in the description. And now, let's talk about the care of Porcelio Levis. In many respects, Porcelio Levis is one of the easiest isopods to care for. Substrate moisture can vary quite a bit for this species. It does well in enclosures with uniformly moist, though not soggy, substrate, and it can do well in drier enclosures as long as it has the all-important hydration station. That said, providing a moisture gradient in the enclosure is the most practical way to care for this species, and in my opinion is optimal. Porcelia lavis is not particularly picky concerning ventilation either. I generally provide low to moderate ventilation for this species, but a little more ventilation is also fine as long as the enclosure doesn't dry out. As I alluded to before, this species has an amazing feeding response, particularly dairy cows and milkbacks. It will eat nearly anything and fast. In addition to leaf litter, which is a crucial component of the diet of most isopods, my Porcelio Levis will swarm and swiftly devour most fruits and vegetables, as well as a wide variety of protein sources such as dry shrimp, fresh shrimp, fish food pellets, dried minnows, etc. I occasionally end up thawing a few more frozen pinky or fuzzy mice than my garter snakes will eat, and when I offer them to my Porcelio Levis, the entire mouse is gone within hours. As far as breeding is concerned, this is one of the most prolific isopod species in the hobby. And as I said, this is particularly true of dairy cows and milkbacks. They start reproducing when quite small, probably around one quarter of their maximum adult length, possibly even less. They produce frequently and grow fast, to the point that you should have a plan in place for dealing with excess isopods if you're thinking about keeping this species, or you'll probably find yourself with too many. Is Porcelio Levis a good option for a bioactive cleanup crew? Well, I'd say this species is controversial. There is no doubt that it's a resilient species and it's suited to a wide variety of environments. Perhaps too well suited. If you're keeping something that is likely to snack on isopods and is tough enough not to be snacked on itself, this species might be a good option, but how likely is Porcelio Levis to attack your reptile, amphibian, or invertebrate? That depends a lot on the specific situation. An invertebrate that experiences any sort of molting problem is extremely likely to be regarded as a food source by Porcelio Levis. A dead reptile, amphibian, or invertebrate for that matter, will also be quickly recognized as food. The question is whether Porcelio Levis will recognize healthy reptiles, amphibians, and invertebrates as food. This probably depends partly on the population density of the isopods, the quantity and frequency with which they are fed, and the delicacy of the species you are keeping them with. I've been keeping Porcelia Levis dairy cow with one of our crested geckos in a bioactive varium for a few years now with absolutely no issues, but that doesn't mean this will work for everyone, or for every species of gecko, or for every individual gecko. I recommend an abundance of caution and research when considering Porcelia Levis as a cleanup crew. If you're in doubt, just use a less protein-hungry species. I have some suggestions for cleanup crew isopods in this playlist here. So, what about Porcelio Levis as a pet or display species? Let's address the positive points first. Porcelio Levis are nice and big, although not huge isopods, which makes them great for viewing and decent for handling, although they are faster runners than some. Dairy cows and milkbacks are among the boldest and most active isopods in the hobby. So if you want isopods that you'll see out and about, these are great choices. If you want isopods that'll get really excited about food to the point of taking it from your fingers, again, these will fit the bill. Porcelia Levis is very easy to care for. It would be challenging to think of many easier, hardier isopod species in the hobby. So far, it sounds like I'm describing the perfect pet isopod, but Porcelio Levis does have some drawbacks. The first is a pretty minor con. It's simply that 
there aren't a huge number of color and pattern morphs of this species as there are of Armadillidium vulgare or Porcelio scaber. However, I think that by far the biggest con is that Porcelio levis is very prolific. This might sound like an advantage, and it can be, but more than one hobbyist has expressed frustration at the fact that they have too many dairy cows and no idea what to do with them. So unless you're prepared to deal with a robust population of isopods that will tend to become even more robust without some sort of control mechanism, you might want to look at one of the less prolific morphs or even another species, one that is a little less prone to rampant reproduction. Personally, I adore my Porcelio levis, but if you're still shopping around for a good isopod for your needs and interests, I've been building a playlist of isopod species profiles. Take a look, and then, in the comments of this video, tell me which species you would like me to feature next in the species profile series. Thanks for watching today. I post videos every Friday with Wednesday live streams, all on aquarium and vivarium pets, with lots of isopod content. Feel free to rate, share, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then tap the bell for notifications all so you don't miss my next video.